I have a confession to make. Up until the beginning of this year, I was still using NPM. My take was that it's the default. You have to have it installed anyways. Why not just use what's already there? Not have to worry about people trying out some new thing. We all know how to use NPM. Yarn, I would still occasionally use because it was the happy path for React Native, but generally I just use the default. And then I had to format my SSD on my computer because I had filled the space almost entirely with node modules. I know we always have that black hole meme and I know it's like, funny to talk about. But the problem here isn't just the massive amount of files that NPM was reinstalling in all of my projects. It was the amount of time it took to do that, the slowness in getting my dependencies installed and managing them, and a lot of other small things that I didn't expect to like so much about PNPM. This video is obviously going to be about PNPM. It is the new industry standard for a reason, but I want to talk a bit about why, what it took for me to get over the hump and try it myself, and some of the pleasant surprises I've had along the way. Let's talk about PNPM. So real quick history lesson. NPM was the original package manager for your node applications, eventually started being used for web apps too. It was missing a couple things. In particular, it didn't have a lock file, so it would blindly install the newest version based on what you had specified in your package JSON, and it would often cause version desync and people having issues reproducing builds. Yarn was largely made to lock down the versions of things you were using and generally try to improve the installation experience for packages, but a lot of those wins got copied from Yarn back over to NPM. The yarn.lock was copied as the package lock, the install speeds got faster, and NPM eventually surpassing those of Yarn. And then Yarn went off in the crazy world of Yarn 2 and Yarn Berry and I'll be honest, I haven't kept up too much since then. However, I did see PNPM starting to get some attention. It's been around for a while and I've known about it for at least a couple years now, but I never thought it was worth it. Until I started contributing in another project that was using it, and I saw how fast the install times were. In particular, the reinstall times or installing on separate projects when you already have some of the dependencies installed. But then I had the mind blowing moment. I'm installing a new package for the first time in a PR, right after somebody else had installed a different package and made a PR too. And when theirs merged first, mine didn't have a conflict. And that's when I realized there's something special going on here. And I did a scary thing I hadn't done in a long time. I opened up a lock file and what I found blew me away. It was readable and well-structured. It wasn't a giant pile of JSON that can barely open in your editor without crashing. The PNPM lock is using YAML, which sure, YAML, not the best thing, but man, it's minimal and readable. And more importantly, it diffs well. So in code reviews and pull requests, it's much less likely you're going to get a conflict that causes everything to go to hell. That blew me away and got me excited to start using PNPM more. Since then, I've gotten deep into like the linking behaviors, the workspace stuff for working with turbo repo and mono repo technologies, and overall just having a great experience. It took me a while to accept that something like PNPM was worth adding to my workflow and to the projects that I build in because NPM did the job fine. But what you don't realize is all the little things you do to work around it. Both the mess that is trying to use a package lock in Git, as well as the hell that is your node modules being giant in all your projects projects. Solving those problems made developing and working on many projects at once way more pleasant. And if you're the type of person that has like 15 projects on their computer right now, you should really consider using PNPM for that. I'll admit for your work project at your company on your company machine that has two code bases on it, it might not make the biggest difference. Reinstalls and formatting will always be much more pleasant, but the day-to-day -day won't be too big a difference at all. But if you're the type of person like me that loves knitting new projects, trying out new things, cloning repos, and playing around in general, PNPM has made my life significantly significantly better to a point that I never would have guessed. Their website has a couple more motivations, the things that motivated them to build it and the cool things it does. That I didn't talk about here. I'll make sure there's a link to that in the description. Maybe we can pin some of those features in the video here. Generally though, it's been a great experience. So how about you? Have you tried out PNPM yet? If not, what's holding you back? And if you have, what's been your favorite part so far? If you wanna hear a bit more about different style solutions in modern web dev, I'll pin a video here where I break down all the different CSS frameworks and how they work and how they differ. So check that out if you haven't already. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.